Hi, I'm Dave Francis, National Safety Director for Little Giant Ladder Systems, and this is the Aerial Safety Cage by Little Giant. We're going to take a moment to talk about the proper use of the cage. First off, cages are very big pieces of equipment. Um, they're not meant to replace a standard six or eight foot A-frame. That's not their purpose. These are replacements for scissor lifts where, in situations where you can't get a big lift in or for jobs that you would set up small scaffolding jobs. Um, this is gonna be faster, uh, more adjustable. It's gonna be fiberglass, so it's non-conductive. So it's for all those hard to reach places where you would normally use a scissor lift or a small set of scaffolding. You can see in those situations, having something like this is going to be very cost effective compared to those other options. First off is the weight. I'm gonna demonstrate it as a single person, but I recommend that you use two people when operating the cage because of the weight. We're gonna use the tip and glide wheels. Just roll it out to where you need it. Raise it up until those feet make contact and then walk it up from there. Now, as you're opening and closing this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your hands are down here, not up here where there's a pinch point and go ahead and spread that out until this comes down and these locking mechanisms lock onto this crossbar right here at the top. Climbing the cage is three points of contact. If you have a rule of three points of contact where you can't let go unless you're tied off from above, then this would be exactly what you're looking for. Now there are one way walk-in gates as you climb it just push your way through it. They'll lock behind you. Now you have a 42 inch handrail, mid-span, toe kick. For those three point of contact issue or tie off at certain height issues, now I'm working out of an engineered guardrail system. So I can work 360 degrees with both hands in every direction, get the job done comfortably and contained within the footprint of the ladder. To get back down, I'm gonna have to open this gate inward towards me, pin it with my hip as I reach around and open the other gate behind me. Now I'm gonna climb back down three points of contact. Now this particular model is a five to nine. Starts out at a five foot platform, that's where your feet are, raises up to a nine foot platform, and it does it one foot at a time on either side. So if you're working in uneven surfaces, stadium seating, stages, um, any kind of stairwell, sloped ground of any kind, you can just adjust one side longer than the other. Now to adjust this in height, you're simply going to unlock the rock locks on the side of the cage, pressing at the bottom of the rock lock, it will lock into the open position. You do that on both sides. Now the intersection of the cage is free to slide up and down. You want to move your hands away from all of these rungs that could cause a pinch point and push the upper section of the cage away from you. Now those rock locks can lock back into place um, at every one of these rung holes. You can half lock them in between and then when you get to the next available hole, they'll lock into place. We recommend that you only raise this a few rungs at a time. You don't want the top of the cage to get top heavy and tip that direction. So raise this side of the cage, step over to the other side, repeat the process, unlocking the rock locks and then raising that side back up the other direction. And of course you can go a few feet past that other side, locking that in place. Now, as this adjusts in height, the bottom is gonna spread open. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the bottom of the cage isn't stuck by readjusting those feet to that more flared position. Again, finish the process, open the rock locks on the side, keep your hands out of any kind of pinch points, and then raise the top section of the cage up to its maximum height, spread the base at the bottom. To move the cage around, once it's in the open position, we use the wheel lift. The easiest way to do that is raising 
the ladder with your arms at the same time that you're pressing down with your foot and locking those in place. Now the ladder can be easily moved uh, wherever you need to use it. The cage should never be climbed on while the wheel lifts are in the open position. They need to be dropped down to the closed position. The cage passes all of the side tip tests with the flare that it already has, but if you're gonna go up uh, higher, you might need a little bit more stability. So we've added the outriggers. These function by pressing this button right here on the backside. That allows this to move out and deploy. Press it again if you have enough room to deploy at that kind of an angle. These are bayonet style levelers. So twist to your right, telescope it down until it makes contact, and then tighten twisting to the left or counterclockwise. Again, repeat that process on the other side of the cage, deploy it out, twist clockwise, drop it down, and then twist counterclockwise to put it in the position. Now you're never gonna want to adjust the height of the cage or move the cage with the outriggers deployed. These need to be closed. Just reverse the process, telescope them up, press this button on the back to put these back into place. You wanna do that before you make any adjustment to the height or position of the cage. So in order to lower the cage to a lower height or put it back into the closed position, you're gonna use the rope grab or descent control system on the side of the ladder. So if you unlock these rock locks on this side of the ladder, you'll notice that gravity would normally cause this to just slide down. This brake system prevents that from happening. What we want you to do is step away, keep your hands out of any of these possible pinch points and use the descent control on the side to feather it out and slowly get your ladder to descend one or two rungs at a time. Now, again, they don't have to line up perfectly with the hole. I can lock those back into place and then slowly allow that to drop down until that locks into place and then go over to the other side. Make sure that the rope grab is um, unlocked to start coming back down and then use that rope grab. Again, making sure that you keep your hands outside of, and we don't wanna just unlock this and allow the entire thing to slam shut. So we're gonna slowly bring it down a rung at a time until we lock it into place and then finish the process. Again, keeping our hands out of any pinch points and then allowing that to telescope down, lock those in place. Now to completely close the cage, we're gonna raise up on these hooks at the back. That's gonna unlock the top platform, allowing that to tip up. And close the cage completely. Walk that back, hand over hand, until those wheels connect. And then that's gonna allow you to move it to the next position. Now that's the five to nine aerial safety cage. The bigger eight to 14 operates just a little bit differently. So we're gonna wanna take a moment to show the differences. On the larger eight to 14 foot cage, it operates just a little bit differently. We still have the rock locks, uh, but we also have a rope pulley device that's similar to an extension ladder. So you're gonna unlock the rock locks on both sides and then use the rope pulley system to raise that ladder up again. You're only gonna wanna go one to two rungs at a time so that the top of the ladder doesn't become top heavy. And then you're gonna need to adjust the bottom. As it goes up, it's going to flare out. So make sure that the bottom of the ladder is in position. Lock those rock locks in place 
and then get it to that next position. Return to the other side, unlock your rock locks, and then raise that up using the rope. Again, you can go two rungs up and then past that a little bit and then rock lock that in place. And again, back to the other side. Always maintain control of your rope as you unlock that. Raise that up. Here's your last rung. Lock those in place and then go up to that last rung. Again, adjust the bottom. Now again, this is the replacement for a scissor lift or a scaffolding system. So it does take a few minutes to get it set up, but it is a lot faster than the alternative. Lock those in place. Now you're at the full 14 foot height. In order to get that down, you're gonna reverse the process. You're gonna always wanna make sure that you maintain control of the rope and that you keep your hands outside of any kind of sliding pinch points. So bring that down. You're gonna pull that towards you to get it to unlock. That allows you to control the descent. Don't unlock this and just let go of it and allow gravity to bring that all the way down. That's gonna damage the cage and possibly cause harm to people in the surrounding area. So you're gonna to wanna to control the descent, keeping your hands outside of any kind of pinch points, dropping it down a couple of rungs at a time each time. And again, you're gonna adjust that flare at the bottom as you do it so that you can control using the rope. All right, now that we're at the lowest, this is down to the eight foot height. In order to unlock the eight footer, you're gonna to need to take a step up the backside of the cage. Now there's stickers in place, um, warnings in place that you're not supposed to climb the backside of the cage while somebody's on the front side or use the backside as a climbing. You can step up on that bottom rung in order to grab these tabs at the platform that unlock it, raise that up enough that you can then push the bottom end in. This is rated for 375 pounds, so it is a one AA product, one man only climbing the front of the cage. If you purchased your cage with the factory installed uh, ratchet levelers, this is how they work. If the ground is uneven or sloped at all, you just step on the tab at the bottom of that foot and that's going to telescope out and allow you to level that to the ground. And so all of those really fine adjustments and leveling you do just by stepping on the tab on the side of that and ratchet it down to the desired height. Now they're spring loaded up to get them to close, you're gonna pull on this tab out away from you and that's going to telescope back up to take the weight off of that pull until those disengage. That's the ratchet leveler for your cage, aerial safety cage system. Another accessory for the aerial safety cage is the saddlebag. It's made of a ballistic nylon, so it's a heavy duty tool bag that attaches to the top rail of your guardrail system. Just snap it in place. And then it has some longer nylon straps that go down to the mid span, holding it in place. Make sure that your flap is facing inward so that you can easily access those tools from inside of the cage. You're gonna to wanna to inspect your cage before each use. Um, basic things apply if it's cracked, bent, broken, or split. Uh, on any part of the cage. If it wasn't there when we manufactured it, you don't know what it's rated for now. That cage needs to be tagged out and taken out of service and looked at and replaced. Any kind of maintenance on any of the moving parts, you can lube them using a silicone dry lube, a DuPont silicone dry lube, uh, or any other brand. Don't use a, a oil or a WD-40, and make sure that when you spray it that you get it on the 
moving parts, but not on the rungs where somebody could slip or on the ropes that are used to raise and lower the cage. We wanna make sure that the dry lube gets just on those moving parts. If you have any questions about the function of the cage while you're using it, there's a QR code right here on the label of the product. You can scan with a smartphone, it pulls up a training video, or call our customer service, customer support line. We want you to climb safe, get home at the end of the day. That's the aerial safety cage by Little Giant Ladder Systems.